Greetings, it is I, Tempest Nine of Jacoba, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It's time to continue our discussion on Werewolf the Apocalypse. When we last left off, I introduced you to the world and told you about the various terms in the lexicon. Today I'm going to dive deeper into the setting and begin telling you about werewolf society and what it means. So let's talk about what werewolf is. It's a gothic punk setting. That is the best way to describe the game setting that you're going to be diving into. It's got the gothic feels to it, yet those punk feels because they're tough brawler types that werewolves are, with that natural wild side. This means that cities are something that werewolves dislike completely. Werewolves are havens of the worm. The spirits that exist there are corrupted by what man has caused, and oftentimes are aggressive and dangerous towards werewolves. Hated vampires also exist there, which would love to snuff out werewolves and kill them all. So there is great danger in among cities, though there are those tribes that try to go in there, to try to coexist there, or others that travel in there when necessary. It doesn't mean a werewolf won't go to a city. It just means they really don't like it. Of course, werewolves prefer the wild, but the thing about the modern world is you have to think about how much you can go from wilderness to a city at the drop of a hat, especially in some place like here, like America, where the difference is very narrow between the two of them. There are also places in the wild which are even dangerous for Garu. Places that, because Gaia is unforgiving. She is a cruel mother when necessary. So there are taboo places in the world that if a Garu, a werewolf, should venture into it, they might not return. The chances are very slim. There are dangers out there that they just can't overcome. The modern world has done terrible things to the werewolf. There are very few wild wolves left in the world. Many of them have been driven to extinction, and this also means that the lupin breed of werewolves has also been threatened by this. There are less and less wolves to be there to be the brethren, to breed with or to spread the bloodline that existed now. 13% of werewolves that exist now are lupin. 13. That is a dwindling number when it existed nearly B splitting nearly between Hamid and Lupin before. Now it has dropped down to this lower number. Think of it this way, that there needs to be blood of both humans and wolves, because a werewolf is both of them for the balance to exist. And since this balance is broken out, there are many werewolves that are beginning to suffer from insanities or problems with their mind, and even some that have, because of this imbalance, have been thrown to the worm, have been driven to it, and corrupted. That this terrible imbalance that has been caused, just, it, it causes so much damage to the werewolves. So even with the loss of population, just the fact that this imbalance exists is terrible to them. Now it's important to note that werewolves could encounter wolves in the wild. First thing you have to note is they're not affected by delirium, so a werewolf in Krynos form, though scary to wolves and could easily intimidate them, will not do it just naturally by the state of it. A werewolf in Krynos form could drive wolves away from their territory by their sheer existence because they are a sort of natural threat and seem equivalent to a large pack of wolves. This unfortunately, this modern time will often mean deaths for those wolves, so it can be pretty terrible. But a werewolf in the appropriate form, anything more wolf-like than Krynos, tends to be able to communicate with wolves just as much as humans can talk to other humans. Therefore, there is possibility for communications. Now, werewolves in the modern world are unfortunately something that just doesn't mix very well. Shrinking forests, pollution, a world that is very much changed and loss of a lot of nature. It does cause packs and tribes to turn against each other that no longer are werewolves all brethren. They turn against each other competing for the small territory. It also disenfranchises and makes many werewolves just want to give up the fight, not side with anything just to give up and apathy is something that the worm takes advantage of fully of those werewolves that just give up the fight the number of ronin that exists swell with every moon there are just those that don't want to continue the fight anymore now werewolves did try to call humans in old days to keep them down and keep their society from going out of control but those weren't the only ones Werewolves called the other changing breeds that existed, the other breeds and other various types of creatures, from were-cats to were-bears to were-boars, in something called the War of Rage, where they wanted to prove that they were the true children of Gaia, that they were the greatest of all. They committed effective a genocidal murder and war against all the other changing breeds, and some were driven to extinction, others driven to the very corners of the world. 
The other changing breeds that remain are out there, but they are well hidden. In fact, there are some pockets that are so well hidden that they continually teach their children the horrors of Garu, and there's this hatred that is bred for them that they will try to kill Garu on sight, that they just believe they are these devils incarnate. And unfortunately for the part of werewolves, they kind of are. They realize the mistakes they have made, but they are way, it is way beyond too late for them to be able to change anything. The damage they have done to Gaia by doing this war, by giving in to their pride and their rage, has been immeasurable. Now for werewolves, it is all about the breeding, keeping the bloodline strong. In the olden days, this would mean they would find the choicest of humans or wolves in order to basically breed with. It was actually these sort of groups that were there that came up, that created these various tribes, that these bloodlines of finding the greatest of certain groups of humans and wolves in order to breed with to create these stronger breeds of werewolves. Unfortunately, the results of such unions, nine out of ten children would be normal. Only one out of those children would be possibly a, would change into a werewolf, regardless of human or wolf. The rest of these would be basically of the family. They would be immune to delirium and effectively members of the family, the extended family. And oftentimes many of them will help out Garu because they are of the bloodline, even though they directly are not. They are of a family to them. Now, when a young Garu, whether wolf or human, reaches basically adolescence, this is traditionally 10 to 16 for a human or 1 to 2 years for a wolf. They've already kind of shown themselves different, kind of separated from normal society, and this eventually drives them out, where they are effectively then kidnapped, well, adopted is a better way of saying it, into the tribe who's been watching them, taken along, in which they go through a number of rites of passage, which are unfortunately very deadly at times, but these rites of passage can awaken effectively the werewolf spirit and allows them to transform finally. This does mean that there happens to be lost cubs that exist. There are those that are lost, um, that their connection to them, those that are perhaps built, bred from, kin from more kindred, from more of the bloodline, rather than directly from a garu. It happens occasionally. These lost children, that the fact is, they sometimes go crazy, they sometimes kind of live into this depression which drives them to death. They go through some terrible things because they can understand their connection, but they never go through the rites. When a tribe of werewolves, when a pack of werewolves finds one of these and brings them in, allowing them to take the rites of passage and transform, they find this as a thing to be celebrated. This is a lost cub, a lost member of any tribe, of the Garu, and the numbers are so thin now because of the losses that they've had, that the losses that they can't have these same kind of breeding rights, that the loss of the numbers of Garu, that they're dwindling, that these lost children, they are a godsend that they can bring into the tribe, and though they are much older than tra traditionally necessary, they can still possibly follow the rights and be embraced into the society, into the tribe and the pack. Now, I've previously mentioned there are breeds of Garu. There are, in fact, three. Hamid, Metis, and Lupus. Hamid are the ones born from human and werewolf, or those of kindred blood, possibly speaking. They are effectively those that are closest to humanity, but are trapped between nature and humanity. They understand the follies of man and understand man, but they also respect the fact of what's been happening to nature and the devastation has caused it. So they are caught between these two worlds. They they don't want to like truly turn against their fellow man because they still believe themselves mostly human. They have that human spirit, but they are also a wolf and of nature. They understand they are both at the same time and they just they try to balance it. They give oftentimes pity and respect to their Lupin brethren, but they also kind of look down at them, that they are a dying off breed. There are many groups of Hamids which have kind of gone to a, organize themselves to believe they are the true breed of werewolves and far and above the other rest of, rest of them. And in fact, since they have the numbers, it can kind of almost be understandable that they are the true evolution of it. Then there's the Metis. The Metis are born between a union of two werewolves. The unfortunate part of this is they are often have deformities and are sterile. They're the easiest breed to take Krinos form. They, they are naturally inclined to that form because they are born of two werewolves. The problem is they're oftentimes shunned from groups and tortured and treated cruelly and badly and barely allowed to live. Things go very badly for poor, but those are the Metis breed. And the thing is they don't have another place to go. 
they're, they're deformities. They don't find themselves safe in human society or wolf society. They're those that are only at ease within the tribe itself. And unfortunately, many of them become cruel and ruthless to reciprocate that which has, they've been treated like. They live up to that and show it back in, 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 in kind. On the other hand, there are those that show compassion and kindness far beyond what you should ever think that they should give out. And those are the most tragic figures in all of these societies. Those that are tortured, but yet still keep great spirit. Then there are the lupus. They start out as young wolves, but eventually get embraced into the packs and tribes. And they learn their place there. The thing is, they are the farthest from human society. And they value less words and more actions. They believe in that it was what you do rather than what you say all the times. And they oftentimes are very stoic and, and don't speak very much. But they aren't stupid. They, in fact, are one of the most cunning of the, all of the Garu that are out there, coming up with the best formulations and plans. But they also know they're a dying breed and that their brethren, the wolves, have been threatened and crushed by man itself. So they know man is at fault and blame them completely. So they generally have a dislike of the Hamid and Metis breeds. Most lupus tend to come from the Red Talon tribe, the main tribe of this breed. So that's it for today. I introduced you to a little more of the world of werewolf the apocalypse. I told you a little bit about how they react to modern day society, their relationships with various humans, wolves, and of course the other changing breeds. And then I got into talking about their breeds entirely. The three groups of them, the homids, the human born ones, Metis, the werewolf born ones, and the lupus, the, were the wolf born ones, and how they are reacting not only to each other, but in this modern world, how they are treated in within werewolf society. In the next episodes, I'm going to dive deeper into that structure of the werewolf society, including talking about cairns, their meeting places, and the tribes and packs, and how they break down within the society of werewolves. So if you have questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe to support the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon, link in the description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.